And now we are live. Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome to GH Me Spotlight and Recap here on JLJ Media. I'm JLJ. JLJ Media. Are we on? Oh no. You know, we're on, girl. We're on. <laughs> now it's time for you to start acting up. Yes, you're on. You are on. So we are on. We are here for your Sunday pleasure. Um, this is the, the caboose of the lineup today. <laughs> I feel like that was directed at me. No. <laughs> I kind of got it. it yeah. I'm like <laughs> I got a caboose. I got a caboose too. Like, I got yeah. you. It's, it's, it's back. It's back there. Uh, but so you see me of course. Of course my two people that I could not do this without Lucretia Lyon and Frank Moran say hello you guys. Oh I thought it was hey gonna guys. be Lucretia and Kathleen. I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think you can easily do this without me, James. I'm I'm disposable. Yeah. <laughs> no, Frank Moran, no. Disposable and Frank. Everyone, you see her, you know who she is. She is a she's been on our show many times over the years, usually in person. Usually we're together in person. They you know how things are right now. Yeah, you like six or seven times she's been on the show over the years. We've known you five years now. Mermaid was her last one, I think, wasn't it? When we and talked about And look at my cup. I yeah. use it all the time. It's beautiful. She gave me this cup. It's mm-hmm. beautiful. It's big too. You know, I put a lot of alcohol in there. I mean, coffee. Coffee, coffee, coffee. Coffee, coffee. Uh, but yeah, I have naughty. grapefruit juice. Yes. Oh. Oh, grapefruit juice. Mm-hmm. Hello, Miss Kathleen. Cheers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so who's on? Are there? Can you see everybody who's on or no? It's just audio. No, we, we see everyone. So we all, so we see, I see all four of you. We all see each other. The I chat room them. is alive. They're in the chat room. They're coming mm-hmm. in. They're bowing to you. Let's oh, I bow to you. Salami, salami. Where's the salami? Oh, the chat room. Oh, but there's no chat room. Not like the chat room. Chat room. Oh, so it's, so it's in. It gets to go on YouTube to watch it. That's the last whole thing. So it's on. So I have it up right now. I I'll see it. Anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we also we get up to hundred people sometimes in our chat every oh, yeah. on Sunday. So, uh, oh, hi everybody. I can't see you, but you can see me. Hi, hi. Happy Sunday. <laughs> like, well, what day is it today? Yeah. Saturday. Well, I, well, I don't know. And his mother was mm-hmm. almost 99 and she was like, you know, she'd be, honey, what days did we're like, what's the matter with you? Can't you look at the count? Don't you know? And now like, <laughs> you're, young, you're going, what day is it? Yeah. And he's up there going, <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> I love it. So I'll do a little, I'll do a little church announcements first before we go, before we dive in to talk to her. Um, this is JLT Media. It is Soap Sunday. It's so Sunday. We already did the wide army spotlight. That's out now. We did the forever and a day after show. Lucrece talked about you. Um, that, 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 <laughs> okay, that, yeah. good, good and good stuff. Yeah. That's already out. Um, we had uh, we did the the bold and beautiful mini spotlight. And that was crazy talk, and that's already out already. Um, yes, that's very crazy. And of course, Dish and Days is finishing up over there on their channel. Dish and Days for Days of Our Lives. So they're all out. And my series, The Easter Hair, as a season finale tonight today. It's very explosive, very crazy. That's my audio drama. So we are here. Your, your audio drama? Your your audio your... drama is uh, two, uh, Kathleen. I have like mm-hmm. seven. Frank's on one of them. That's coming up soon. And Lucretia's mm-hmm. on a couple of stuff. She's nope. on forever today. Some of it. That's so. Nope. Yeah, we're releasing that radio. one. Sorry. Huh. You're still releasing the one that I'm on. I thought you would scrap <laughs> that. <one. laughs> we're still releasing it, Frank. <laughs> Um, so yes, yeah, so those are all out now. Jail Jimmy is the place to go and everything. And Kathleen has an event coming up on April 24th. We're going to talk about that also. And Lucretia has something coming out right now. <laughs> yeah. too. We all kind of good stuff going on. And Frank has nothing, but he's no. here. <laughs> good time. Talk about that. It's true. Um, yeah. But Kathleen, I just want to I was say, I was looking back in time and you were evil. Your character was so, <laughs> so you were trying to kill people like Duke and Anna. But then, Let's see, Kathleen, but then, even though Britta was your daughter, mm-hmm. that wasn't the one. All three of you guys, and I'll start with you, Kathleen, I think the tide changed when Nathan became your son. So look at, I was looking at the scenes right. that are happening now with Maxie and that stuff. That couldn't have happened, I don't think, unless we start there. I think. You're so, absolutely right. I totally agree with you. I think, because, I mean, I just came on the show to do evil things, that German with them, and the move. <laughs> what is it poor Kimberly from one room to the next room you know and Robin and then you know we've heard mm-hmm. some stuff with with uh, Duke and it was all evil stuff and then it came back and they gave me Britta and that wasn't exactly why oh here's your lovely daughter oh I have a daughter on the show great first scene opened up what I'm reading reading <laughs> Dr. Obrecht slaps Britta <laughs> you know whack, big one in the face I was like well there's where do you go from there so yeah she wasn't very warm and fuzzy at all and then 
she's still not warm and fuzzy. It's just Obrecht. I shouldn't say she, I, but let's say she, because <laughs> like, it's like, don't yeah, yeah. be Obrecht home or, the, or you're going to be out on the street. I'm like, okay. okay. <laughs> but, um, no, but you're right. I mean, oh, Brit, you know, that wasn't warm and fuzzy when they gave me Nathan and he's just kind, I'm always wondering how come there's some, you know, decent people on these shows because everyone's got a, a story, a backstory and dark side. So there was a couple of good people. He was one of the good guys and I got to be, Obrecht got to be this warm, kind, loving, real. I have to say the word real because Obrecht is never real. She's always on. Everything is, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, but but with him, she could let down her guard and just be herself and talk naturally, which is what we do in real life, but with nobody else. I don't know if that's going to happen with Scott yet, but, you know, mm -hmm. basically with everyone, she's been very, even with Britta, Britta, what mm -hmm. are you doing? Britta? <sighs> There's always an end. <laughs> You're right, you know, Nathan, but I can't say she's gotten warm and fuzzy. There's, you know, Maxie, the grandson. I mean, there's some things because she has so much guilt about her past. And I don't even know what's in it. You know, a lot of it we know about her past. But then, you know, she has one kid, then she had the other kid. And then Nathan, she gave over to Donna Mills. <laughs> to Donna Mills, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Donna, I mean, Magda. Everyone's got two names. I'm telling you. Yeah. When I first started, it was like, we each have two names. One name, you know, to remember 60 people's name is one thing. Then you have to remember 120 names. It's like... Okay, so I remember poor Dominique. I used to call him Dante. Hi, Dante. He goes, it's Dom. <laughs> Hi, Dante. It's Dom. Hi, Dante. It's Dom. I was like, <laughs> he's like, you're a stupid Canadian, like really stupid. <laughs> you know, he left the show and then I remembered his name. So now he's. <laughs> well, Kathleen, how would you, because like with Franco's character, yeah, I mean, it started off as Liesl was more of an admirer of his and then they became close. How would you describe his, the relationship Oprah has with him or had with him uh, as it was with Nathan? Because it seemed like it softened up at least a little bit. Right, actually there was, there was a lot of warmth too, but each, it's so interesting, like in real life, every single person you have a different chemistry with, a different relationship with, whether it's a family member, somebody older, somebody younger, a coworker, you guys, you know, it's like anybody you talk to, you're gonna react differently. So it's the same thing with Obrecht. I mean, with, you know, with Nathan, it was like her son that she had abandoned. So there's like guilt, 30 years of guilt that's sitting there. Frank was like, oh, He's a genius. And, you know, Obrecht is insane. She loves in love with <laughs> Yeah. genius in her mind. He was an asshole. You know, excuse me. Can I say that? Mm -hmm. that's that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I'll probably say worse. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Treated her like caca, you know, and, and, um, and so, yeah. and, you know, and then here's, here's Franco who she's like, Oh, he's a genius. I mean, we had these hysterical scenes years ago about the the set. What was it? The egg salad sandwich. Oh yes. Yes. That was yes. Heather's. Yeah. <laughs> Heather Weber. Yeah. Remember, remember that um, art. What's it called? Uh, it was called Art. I think the play. And there was they made a movie out of it. And I saw the play. It was with I think it was Alan Alda and I'm trying three great South actors. Yeah, it's South all South. white blank canvas and they're all deciding like is this art or is this crap you know one yeah thing, i paid two hundred fifty thousand for it it's genius and i think obrex like the other ones what are you stupid yeah. what this is crap yeah. I buy a canvas for 10 bucks you know so i think obrex like that too you know frank was like oh, she she got someone she can idolize and he was awesome and and i think because she idolized him he's like oh you can be my friend you know so he let her in because i don't see them together but they have got this quirky friendship going that the fans were like, oh, we love this. this is like the best oh. friends and all this stuff. So, and, and again, same thing with Nathan, Obek can be herself. Same thing with Franco. She can let down that superficial guard that she always has on, which is kind of hard because people think that the character is campy and she is campy, but it's not, mm -hmm. it's not always intentional. It's just like, she doesn't trust anyone. So she puts on this guard and says, oh, wait, we must do this one. It's all superficial stuff. But with Franco, let down the guard, Nathan, let down the guard and now franco is kaput i don't know what ever yeah. relationship we'll have again but it won't be a franco so you know he'll be a different person you know britta is britta that we've had i like it because it's always in the writing it's not me it's yeah. you know i open the script and it's like oh britta and you know liesel hug really <laughs> you know, and, and yeah Tivo and I, we milk it. It's like, thank God there's a moment of warmth because there's no warmth, you know, on soaps. There's very little. And if it is, it's just, yes, no. You know, it's just so yeah. fleet. It comes and goes. So you have to inhale those moments and grab them as much as you can. So it's always fun if you get to, you know, have some moment of depth or warmth, especially this character who has like, you know, 10% warmth on a really yeah. good day. 
So it's mostly, you know, just superficial and cold and, and, you know, planning the next, you know, mustache twirling thing. When now with Pete, <laughs> try to get, take him down, you know, a couple of years ago, no, no can do try again. So. Well, but, speaking of that, cause you got, you at least will get set up by Peter and goes off uh, to prison. How was it for you though? When the, when, uh, the producers on the right come to you and say, guess what? We're going to take Liesl off canvas for a while. Uh, we'll be in touch. Do they give you an end time? Like, we'll reach out an X amount of time to bring you back in. Or are you just kind of like waiting and watching to see how the story developed? <laughs> Remon, baby. Yeah. You know what? Years ago, I used to think like, like, oh, what's next? What's next? And I'd be sitting home one week, two weeks, three weeks, one month, two months going, what happened? You know, but I realized it's the nature of soaps. You just, you, I'm, I'm not on contract. I come and go as they need me or as I'm free. If I'm doing something else, then I, I book out and then they don't write for me for however long. But it's kind of, I'm kind of like now at the stage of my life, it's like, you know, I get a date. They usually give you your schedule three weeks ahead, two, three, four weeks, maybe. I don't have anything. Fine. I've got tons of other stuff I'm doing, but, but there was a time, but, but my thing is I'm committed to the show. They have me, I'm, you know, married to them in a way. And if, if like they need me, I'm, of course I'm there, but they didn't tell me that I was going to be gone. People were like, Oh, you know, Perry Shen, he, yes. I don't know if he's been on at all. Yeah. He's been, he's been here. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Not your show. I know your show. I mean, on GH. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, he's been here or there because they're at least playing up him with Britta as friends. So okay, it's kind of nice. Yeah. Okay. But same deal with you. It's like come and go when they have something. I about, think. A year, about a year ago, I guess, right before this whole thing started COVID. And, and he was like, oh, you know, bye. Everyone mm -hmm. said goodbye to me and gave me hugs. I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, well, I guess mm -hmm. I would be here, you know, ever. I don't know. And I was like, you're kidding. Oh, my gosh. I, you know, finished work, left. And three months later, I got a call. I was like, so it just, and I said, well, nobody said goodbye to me. I didn't get any hugs, but it was like 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. But nobody said, Frank, to answer your question in a brief way, no one said anything. Like, mm -hmm. oh, you'll be off canvas for a while. You know, sometimes Frank comes over and says, you know what, don't worry, you'll be gone for a bit because we've got some other story, but you'll be back because it's a big story for you. And sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes they change your mind or, you know, it's like, so I, I don't really... I just kind of take it day by day. You know, it. I hate this expression. It mm -hmm. is what it is. <laughs> Whoever came up with it, really, it should be. I hate that expression. But, but it is what it is. But it is. Yeah. What it is. But it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just and it's kind of life is like that. And I think as I'm getting older, it's kind of good for my mindset because I've always been like, I study, I work, I train, I audition. I, you know, it's like it's very. Um, I don't want to say thought out because it's not that kind of career, but here you have to let go. You know, they say, let go, mm -hmm. let God. I mean, yeah. you really have to trust. Let it go. Let it go. Yes. 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 Have to. The bigger picture. And especially on a soap, there's hundreds of people involved. But yeah. I always think it's my career because I can only think about mm -hmm. not selfish, but this is my career, my life, my income, you know, so I only think, well, how does this affect me? And and they're like Frank and everyone else is looking globally. Well, we got 60 actors, we got 30 on mm -hmm. content. We got to feed the 30 for sure. The other 30 in mm -hmm. as, as needed. So I'm kind of like, just let go, let him, you know, just kind of, it's a different mindset, but it's taken years to kind of get here where I was like, well, what am I doing next week? Well, do they need me next month? Cause I want to go to Europe and do a film there. So if you don't need me, bye. But you know, you have to give other people notice and stuff. And so it's, it's been interesting, but I love the character and I, I could do this for the rest of my life, but I, you know, I want to do other things too. And I'm grateful I have the opportunity to, you know, cause I'm not on contract so I can take off and do stuff. But right now there's nowhere to go. <laughs> there's nowhere to go, right, there's nowhere to go. Oh, I know. It's, funny, it's funny cause friend, a friend of the show, uh, Wally Kurth, um, yeah. talks about how he's not a contract on either show. He's not. He's on days and on a PH. And he said so far he's kind of liked it because he can kind of go back and forth, do both characters, both shows. Um, and kind of be a totally like a redhead, some crazy redhead on another. <laughs> yeah. Good. You totally said. Yeah, that red dope. wig really worked for you. I feel like I feel like that's your next character. <laughs> it worked. It did. Totally. It totally did work. Um, I have one. I have one request, Kathleen, from mm -hmm. our buddy Kenneth Clark, a longtime fan of ours, says. James, can you ask Kathleen to call me Scarecrow? <laughs> Scarecrow. <laughs> Kenneth Clark. Yeah. Who do you think you are? Superman? <laughs> Mr. There you Superman. go. You there you go, Kenneth. Probably he told me somebody, I told me he told me. Ah. 
<laughs> scarecrow. I, and oh, I, my favorite thing was I call her scarecrow. She called me cow. That was such mm -hmm. I'm like, who wrote this? <laughs> mm -hmm. well, I'm like, oh, so okay, we can do it, this. It's so funny because this whole storyline right now, it's all these shady people who've had mm -hmm. shady paths mm -hmm. mm -hmm. who are all together to bring down one guy. It's like so funny. You're all shady. Everybody's had something going on in the past. Right? But Nothing wrong with shady. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know sometimes it's cute. I have it's, to say, I have probably said this before, but when I was li little, when I you know was going to be a dancer or an actress, or, but one of my yeah. favorite roles I wanted to be as an actress was Mrs. Walton. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Kind and sweet. And I said that was I aspire to that. I mm -hmm. thought how wonderful that would be to like like the mother and you know Mermaid for Christmas. I just really wanted to play these like warm, caring, loving, kind people. And then Obrecht. It's like <laughs> whoa. And honestly, I think this is the way to go. The evil way. <laughs> well, isn't it more fun to play the bad guy? Like, cause I with you and with Maura West and just some of the ways you guys play these roles, I'm like, oh my God, they must be having so much fun. <laughs> I have to yeah. say, I mean, I don't go, oh good. I mean, yeah. when I, I open it, I'm ecstatic. You know, oh, this is so great. I get to kill him, stab him, you know, whatever. It is. <laughs> but then the work begins. You know, yeah. that initial like, and then it's, it's work. I mean, for me, I, you know, this is how I operate for my training and stuff. And the, you know, I break it down and I've said this before, but it's like, I work on the accent. This is funny. This is dramatic. Mm -hmm. This one, I need to pull him in. This one, I need to tell him, you know, so it's like, it's, it's a lot of technique that I do with each thing. So it becomes work. So it's not like, oh, you know, but, 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 but there is that underlying excitement of, Yes, I get to take this one down or confront Anna or, you know, but the whole thing with Scott was so cute. So that yeah. was totally different. Let's, let's talk about that. That yeah, was like, because little by little, they've been kind of inching there a little bit. It was, it was mm -hmm. just a Frank, you guys were ready. We were shipping it. Mm -hmm. We were shipping it. We were shipping it. It was her knight in shining armor. Come on. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Never had anyone who's been on her side. Never. The kids, they take. You know, that's the nature of life, yeah. right? You know, like, <laughs> Don't be that mom, but okay, fine, I forgive you. And then, and then he died. Right? He went to Hallmark. You know, so it's like... <laughs> yeah. He did, too. He totally did, Yep. Yeah. You know, and... Mr. Darcy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he was Mr. Darcy. <laughs> Very yeah, yeah oh my, he's, he's totally Hallmark now. Yes, he's totally Hallmark. Now. So, so it's kind of like you know, everyone. You kind of have that moment with with these people, but basically, you know, that I get to be mean again. I'm I totally got lost track. What were we talking about? Being mean. Mm -hmm. oh, yes, I'm trying yeah. to. Yes. No one has been there for her. No one, because the kids and they take. So yes. So it's her knight in shining arm. I mean, saved her life from that slimy doctor. Yeah, Doctor Kirk. <laughs> You know, Cesar was nobody. He just took and then abused her and the, you know, the thing with Anna and all this stuff. So it's like, here's somebody who rescued her. It's like, what? So I think it started there. That was the seed that planted. And she's kind of like, and he was kind. And then they, that they, they shared their love for Franco and they commiserated. So they had a lot of depth together. You know, they have a lot of shared uh, pain and kindness. And I don't know. And again, I won't know till I read the next script if it's manipulation or if it's genuine. I'm going for the genuine right now because I think that's where she needs to go. And that's what it feels like it's written. I, I'm not reading yeah. any lines any, you know, again, mustache twirling. So it seems mm -hmm. it's really genuine and they're awkward. And I love the awkwardness. Mm -hmm. like, they're, that's they're, cute. Yeah. You know, yeah, she kind of tried to touch him, but you know, and, and they're, his <laughs> stay with her. So it's really cute, and soaps are really, you know, it takes a long time. So I think it's cute that it, there's time to, you know, sniff each other out. It was called sniffing. It's like, <laughs> is there something here? Actually, when I was on Match.com, that's how I met Michael 14 years ago, <laughs> years and three days ago. And I, I put that was my title, sniffing 202. You know. <laughs> I think she's doing that. She's just kind of like, but I think there's something, some genuine feelings there, but they're both scared shitless, if I can say that. You know? again. I, want oh, ask, yeah. I want to ask you a question about that. Actually, you, you and your, your man, Michael, we love Michael, 14 years, nine years married. Mm -hmm. you, what do you think? Why does it work for you guys? What do you think? Why it works? Because I feed him. 
<laughs> my stomachs. That's yeah. right. I'm like that. Works. <laughs> well, okay. You know what? First of all, we're older. We met older. Not, you know, we're not 20. We don't even know who we are because our brains haven't, you know, that back soft spot hasn't gotten hard yet. So I think it took a long time. I've been through a lot of stuff. He's been through a lot of stuff, you know, different relationships, marriages, whatever. And I think we're at the point where it's like, you know what you don't want as much as you know what you want. Patience, listening, uh, giving space, emotion, not not physical space, because we're, we're not in the same room for, you know, more than, you know, five minutes or so. Where are you? Where are you? So I mean, we're... <laughs> It's, it's cute, but, but we really, we get along, we're compatible. But I think the first year and a half, we took it slow because we usually, both of us would like dive in and get married or move in with somebody. And before you know it, you're like, what did I do that for? And then <laughs> and you extricate yourself from a bad relationship. So I think, and we just really, I mean, but I mean, giving to the space, it's like I, you know, listen to some stuff he'll he'll say and I'll go, <laughs> you know, and then I'm like, oh, this guy's the best guy you've ever met. <laughs> Don't, it's not worth it. It's yeah. not worth it. And his mother, I learned a lot from his mom who kept saying, honey, 98 years old, life's too short. Life's too, you know, for like, <laughs> this little thing, you know, big yeah. thing, you know, but little, things like, you know, and the same thing. He's like, uh, yeah. okay, fine. you know, so I think a lot of forgiveness, a lot of patience, a lot of listening, a lot of, and just tons of love. And it's kind of funny. I mean, we're far from perfect and, you know, but it's like, if something goes wrong, I go, you know, or he's misbehaving. Either I make him stand in the corner or <laughs> uh, you behave, you can come out of the corner. <laughs> but the other, the other part is I go, you know what? Sometimes maybe like the person like me, I act out. It's like, it's because I need attention. I need love or, I'm, you know, it's like, or food, you know, whatever it is. It's like something, it's like, why is that person acting that way? Instead of like, oh, you're attacking me. It's like, what's behind it? I'm ignoring him, I'm not giving yeah. him love, not enough attention. Something went down and he's now, you know, what do you call it when you put it on somebody else when it's really your problem? You know, it's like proje uh, yeah, so it's projection. Cool. Yeah. I think at this nice ripe age that I'm at, which I'm grateful to be here, you just learn all that stuff and you learn that, you know, that isn't an attack. There's something going on there. So maybe I need to. And so instead of like, you know, fighting back, I go, you need a kiss. You want something to eat? You know, mm -hmm. it's like a humor. You know what? I guess the number one thing humor. <laughs> We humor away a lot of stuff. And it's like pinky forgiveness. <laughs> it's, 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 listen, nothing's perfect in life for anybody. You, but it, and, and I hate the word takes work. It takes energy. You have to give, give, you know, and energy and to make it work. You know, and then I go off and I hide in my bathtub for an hour or two and read my whatever soup magazines and he <laughs> and watches YouTube, you know, music videos or Valerie pictures, whatever. I mean, you know, we all have our thing of just like breathe and we come together, but it's, it, it is energy and it takes thinking and thought. But I hate the people say it's a lot of work. It's not about work. If you have to work, like on some of these shows, these relationships, you, you know, we watch like, um, yeah. It's or you know married at first sight some of these things and we'll watch these but you know i'm fascinated by the psychological emotional behavior that you know we've all made these mistakes 20 30 years ago don't do it you know we're yelling <laughs> it's like a horror movie you're watching you're like no don't go up there don't. <laughs> you lying bastard you know i love it that, that's great um, there is a, a person in chat who asked a question, but you kind of answered it before on our show. She doesn't make up the lines. I mean, Maine is mostly you, mostly it's mostly script, right? Everything is mostly you read from the you, you learn from the script. Oh yeah, um, I don't make there, up. Yeah, so you guys, I know you asked this question. It was Kelly Public asked the question. I was like, well, she doesn't really make up from the script, but there's a line that they liked. You said was, um, you can't always get what you want, but you said it to, uh, I think it was to Peter. So I mean, but but, but these scenes, of that, but see that those couple of scenes where you we finally met up, you and Peter finally met up, and it was like, and it was just like, you know, in court, like really, you know, well, enjoy it while you can, because you're going down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Because <laughs> he came after you. I mean, your character is the character he came after. I mean, that, that was first. He was just like, let's just shut huh? her down. Let's just get rid of her. No one will believe her. It was they just. I mean, so you have a, you have an axe to grind. Like, you have a true axe to grind against people. Yeah, but you know, come on, I locked him up in the cabin and I threw him, <laughs> closet at him, I hit, hit him, with, beat him with a bat, snakes. Most we guys would like that. Eight yeah. round snake actors that they <laughs> ranked that day. I mean, you know, she, but but obviously now, retrospect, because then I was mortified. And of course, the worst thing, which I told you was at back then, I think was eating in front of him. And he was starving. He was like, oh, <laughs> you know, that, whatever. So I mean, all those horrible things, but 
Now, and I and I felt bad. I mean, Kathleen felt horrible that Obrecht was doing this stuff. I mean, I get tormented. People write to me, you're so evil. I'm like, I'm sorry. I know. Like, mm -hmm. I know character. I know. Me too. You know, so I totally get it. But now, you know, the way they let his character show what he's done, it totally makes sense. But it's a soap opera. It could take four or five years before you find out that the guy's a scumbag or that mm -hmm. Obert is a scumbag, you know? So it's like, so now it's totally, I don't feel bad about what happened because, you know, she should have, Obert should have done away with them properly. <laughs> yeah. So back the next day, no big deal. Remember, remember what I did with, was it Victor Cassidyne? Mm -hmm. I shot him <laughs> enough, took a pillow, suffocated him. That was better, still not enough. And then he thinks I blew up the building and then he was like, <laughs> Oh, poor Teo. <laughs> oh, poor Teo. I love Teo. I love yeah. Teo. I love Teo. We had so much fun working together. Yeah. That's how it is. You know, it's yeah. just, not easy to go. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. And I have to kill him. Frank, wait, wait, wait. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, uh, there were just a few scenes these past couple of weeks with uh, Lisa and Scotty, which I thought, as we talked about their kind of burgeoning sort of relationship, Scotty, who has such a immediate distrust and dislike of Jason, uh, uh, so when he goes to visit him in at the PCPD, it's Liesel that can so easily uh, reach out to Scotty and say, no, 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 Jason's not the one that you should be worrying about, it's Peter. I, I thought in terms of what you're talking about in the direction of the relationship where it's going, I can feel like it seems very genuine at, I mean, as it's written thus far, and because I don't think yeah. Scotty would change his mind unless he really felt uh, Obrick was sincere. Yeah, and, and it was totally sincere. And I played it like that and I felt that it's like, because Obrick knows. She learned from Anna. So, I mean, the thing is, what if Anna was lying or who? I think Anna to told me, right? So, yeah. Obrecht knows from Anna that, yes, you know, Peter's the one. And now she tells Scotty, it's not Jason, honey, it's okay. But, you know, but they've already been like, he let her stay. He, that's another thing besides saving her from Dr. Kirk. He let her stay and hide out in his hotel for a while. And there was no schnooky going on. No right. hiding salami, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say salam? That's yeah. a lot of girls. Yeah. Okay, yeah. It was platonic and he was kind. And so I think they spent a lot of time talking and sharing. Even the, the night, one night stand and the next morning, they're like, you know, business as usual. Let's go and let's take care of him and look at the paper. And all, you know, so they were mm -hmm. like friends. So I think there's some, some kind of a solid friendship going. You know, so I think he can trust her because of the time they spent together. He knows when she says something and she learned, she said, you know, I think I, I tell him, it's like, it's, you know, Anna told me. So he knows that I, it's not, I'm not making this up kind of thing. Um, the scenes yeah. between you and Fanola were amazing. So I think, good. I Thank thought, you. I thought, I just thought there were so many layers. I mean, Fanola just turns it on and you just, you know, and you just believe her anyway, whatever she's doing. Um, and you guys had to come to, again, my enemy is my enemy is my friend. It's kind of, you had to come together and she had her own guilt about what was going on and Obrick knew that. And kind of needle her a little bit, but then you you were vulnerable about what happened with Dr. Kirk, and Anna caught that. It was like, uh, what was I like, like, like to play? That was just that was just amazing scenes. Thank you. Those were wonderfully written scenes, and they're great to play. When you read the, get a script like that, you're like, oh, you can sink your teeth into it. But the other thing was, Obrecht has guilt with Franco because she was pinning it on Peter, Peter, Peter. Mm -hmm. Now Peter caused Franco's death, killed him. So, you know, by, by, oh, Frank, you know, trying to, so it's her, she, I mean, and then all this guilt is kind of her fault. She could have stopped it. She could have helped. So here's Anna's guilt. Here's, you know, oh, it was a very interesting, really well-written stuff. Those are really good scenes to play. So many times you to just get, you know, you're just trans, what's it called? Trans, you know, transposition. What's the word? The, just dialogue. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, just yeah, just it's um okay, exposition. Yeah. Exposition. Yeah. exposition, exposition. Yeah. We're just talking, so you know, I'm. I remember when I did all my children, eighty nine, ninety, just for a couple of months, and every line, you know, John, I really think John, you should, she, you shouldn't marry Susan, John, John. Are you listening to me, John? Mm -hmm. I said the guy's name like ten times in every. Mm -hmm. So you're just telling the audience if they just click on because they were in the bathroom or making lunch that John shouldn't marry Susan, you know. So. Yeah. A lot of times it's just those scenes, but you are helping somebody move along. But these scenes, sometimes you get these great scenes and we live for that as actors. 
you know that. I mean, it's just like, give me something to. <laughs> yeah, there were so many layers in that scene. And to me, this was like probably the first time that Anna and Ulbricht were almost on equal footing is yeah. that they understood each other in that moment with their surrogate sons, as Scott put it, like with Franco is your relationship with them or Ulbricht's. And then we had Anna and Peter in that sort of same relationship. And that layer of two, when she realized Dr. Kirk and Faison with her, and that there was all this similarity there with both women that they were finally able to see each other's point of view. That's why it works so well. You know what's yeah. really interesting? Because, you know, we're not privy to the whole story. You get a little, you know, your script and that's it. So all of a sudden we're at the wedding and I see them the camera and there's Alex, the twin. Yeah. And yeah. she's the one that had the kids. So she's the mother. I'm going, what? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, nobody told me. <laughs> Mother, so she was born King Caesar. So I should have been jealous and angry with her as opposed yeah. to Anna. Yeah. It got really, it was, that was never quite clear. So I'm getting like text the writers going, wait a minute. <laughs> have I been angry at the wrong person? Mm -hmm. you know? As we knew as an audience, because they, they yeah. feel it to us, and it was a secret to like some to, to Peter and obviously. So we knew, so it's funny you didn't know that. We knew and we're like waiting for it to come out. Yeah. Um, no idea. I'm, I'm literally at the wedding, you know, we're filming the scenes and I and they play it because they didn't play it in rehearsal. And now they're playing the scene. I'm like, what? You put myself <laughs> there. What the hell is going on? <laughs> so who am I, who have I been angry with? I've been, you know, snarling at Anna for the last nine years. And turns out it's not Anna, it's Alex. And Alex is the one I should stab because she's been like taking my boyfriend or husband or whatever he wants. <laughs> I don't know. It's confusing. It's, it's above my pay grade, I don't know. I know. <laughs> I still think for as much as that, uh, Liesl and Anna can see sort of eye to eye of sorts on this Peter situation. At, at the end of the day, it's still Anna wants to bring him to justice, and Liesl just wants to see him dead. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, she does. That's what it was, yeah. right? She Liesl uh, said, "Oh well." And she's like, "We just want to take him to justice." So doesn't he? and I'm like, "Yeah, right." <laughs> So again, <laughs> we'll see what's in the writing. I maybe I'll never go after him. I mean, many times people are like, How come you didn't take down so and so? I'm like, I don't know. They wanted another character to do it and they had to they owed him twenty seven episodes and they don't owe me anything. So, you know, it's it's not it's an animal that you can't really control. It's like so I don't know who's gonna take Peter down. I, I hope I get to, but maybe they already got sick of me taking him trying to take him down in the cabin. So maybe it'll be somebody else. I don't well, know. There's so many people, quite mm -hmm. frankly. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned something, Lisa, that, or, uh, Kathleen, that was uh, interesting, is that when you read the, the script for that scene, uh, that you just like, okay, sure. And then when you get on set, you're kind of like, whoa, all right, that's really Alex, not Anna. Is it the, kind of uh, the, the standard operating procedure there at GH that the writers will just give you the script and then if you have questions, they will, you, it's up to you to seek them out or will they ever give you background information about like, that's why you feel like this because this happened years ago that you may not even be aware of. No, trust me, the director on set gets an earful from me. Uh, excuse me, <clears throat> Fido or Larry or Bill, whoever's directing or the girls, you know, there's some great directors there and I'm like- Fido, we love Fido. Fido, yeah. Fido's great, but you, has he been on your show? Yeah, he has, yeah. Oh, he's a sweetheart, he's smart, he's great, he's, you know- Musician, musician. He just, he really is the character. We did, we did like Krampus together and yeah. all stuff. That I mean, was so good. That was, I love that, but he just really, he loves you know the whole he's really good in big group scenes so each director has their strengths and they give them you know that kind of stuff so but this one i think it was fine i was just like you know i just hate to interrupt because especially listen when there's like 40 people on the set right there's like 20 extras and 10 you know leads and a bunch of supporting a bunch of you know it's like and all of a sudden and you're like i'm sorry excuse me may i ask a question there's no time mm -hmm. no <laughs> so I wait till you know they finished everything and then I go off Fido on his way off to you know do the next time I'm like I just have a quick question and you try to keep it brief but it's like what the heck am I angry do I forgive and you know can you just bring me up to speed here and so they try to guide you if they cannot answer and there are many times when they have no idea either the producers are there and you ask each each episode has a producer on set so like MK and um uh, Michelle, there's a couple, I think, you know, there, there's a couple of people, they're awesome. And you just say, hey, can you help me here? And they're like, oh, yeah, that's right. Or, you know, if something doesn't quite mesh. And then you say, but like, there was one stupid thing a couple of years ago and at the hospital and, you know, eat your gruel, eat your gruel. And they're like, and there was mm -hmm. a thing like, Ugh, that's disgusting gruel. And 
that would have been funny, except that I've been hustling rural, you know, for the last, grilled the hospital for while I was chief of staff. So I was like, it doesn't go with, you know, oh, you know what, you're right, let's fix it. But, you know, it could have been just funny, like that stuff, I would never have eaten it. You know, that would have been mm -hmm. funny. That's not how it was written. So it's really this, you have to be on your toes. It's like, because the writers are awesome, but they have to remember 58 years. Can you imagine it's 58 years April, last week, April 1st? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, all of you you know into the show so they have to remember each character what they said a million years ago in a million different ways and so you have to kind of keep track of your character what do you eat what do you do how do you think what do you th what's your relationship with this character or that character and so keep the consistency so when it is there's a twist then then it's purposeful and not because you're an idiot or because they made a mistake and, you, and, and the audience is going huh? you know mm -hmm. so like there was a line probably shouldn't say this, but a couple of weeks ago or a couple of months ago, they had a like, great line, but it was like, I say to Nina, you're the only relative, living relative I have. And I was like, well, what about hmm, Britta? Oh yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. So it was just a little faux pas, but it's like, if I didn't catch that, if I would have said it, seven, four million people, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. We know. You have to be on guard. You have to know your character and, and pay attention. So that's very true. And I I want to ask you this a little bit, a little off topic, a little, but not off topic, but a little bit. You are you're on social media. You see you you, you tweet some good stuff. You see that they so you see all the to talk I about. I, so talk, I really appreciate it. I mean, I don't have always the time, but when I do, I love it. The fans are writing and I try to interact and respond. So I appreciate all you guys who write to me and even if you hate me, I love I'm I'm just like good. That means I guess I'm doing my job, you know. If you hate the acting, well, sorry, you know, whatever the 40 years didn't pay off. But <laughs> you know, off Broadway and the Broadway and all the years of <laughs> 167 plays didn't pay off in the schools, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. But you know, people hate the character or they hate, the, and I do too. Like I said, there are times I'm like, oh man, Obek, really? <laughs> to do this you know i i, I hurt for the audience because they're gonna hurt so i feel bad about that but again i'm not mrs walton on the you know the walton oh. so you know it's like that's why i live for those moments of gentleness like with with finale with anna yeah. or whoever so well to be fair soap fans if you were mrs walton would hate you because let's face it the soap fans as a rule prefer the villain to the the sweetness and light if you read it like you're like oh wow i'm like why does everyone hate abby on the young and the restless she seems so nice oh that's why like good, you know good girl. Yeah. Oh, good girl yeah so they love a villain i mean i know i do, do but, it. and i you yeah. know i think it's been the like you're saying james about you know the interaction with the fans it's like i'm so appreciative because i get so upset with Oprah and the fans like we love it get pe like when i had peter in the cabin again <laughs> yeah. the audience knew something i didn't know and they're like get him get him and i'm like i've just eaten in front of the starving creature i'm just <laughs> Yeah, I just threw snakes at him. I'm like, it was horrific. Beat him. And even the, you know, the makeup was so good and his acting was so good. And I'm like, oh, I felt terrible. <laughs> you know, Mike, what's the matter with you? You don't understand. You know, just like a mess. What's, how do we do our relationship? I go in the bathroom, bathroom, and hide. <laughs> how my emotions are. So, I, yeah, you know, the fans are so appreciative and they just love it. It's like, get him, get him. And I tell you, it's for me, it's like, are you kidding? This is awful. But the fans know some, you know, they know stuff and they were. No, so, no. Yeah. so thank you thank you for that the love they, they love they love they love they totally love you they do and um and and, that's, and, gen, and, gen, and genuinely you see the most of the stuff's been great towards all right yeah, yeah. a lot of times they don't get that's so really good um so i wants to know because uh oh, michael b says you just gotta be friends with benefits <laughs> i'm what friends with benefits with scotty mm. you know, that whole frame of friends i mean they kind of already did I don't see that as friends. I don't see them like this big, it's not just the age thing. People are like, you know, and I, what I love is people are like, yes, older people have sex too, but it's much more than having sex. This is people who really, they need love. They want love. To me, it's much more than yeah. one night in the hay, you know, and you want to get together for, it's, it's they're, they're this needs and this love and this motions. And it's, it's much more layered than that. And friends with benefits always sounds like, yeah, hey, you want to go for a coffee? Sure. You want to have some sex? Mm -hmm. Why not? <laughs> yeah, today let's have coffee tomorrow have said it's not casual i think and i don't know if there's a big love affair but it's much more profound i think at least i'd like to think that way there's nothing wrong with friends with benefits i do yeah. remember those days it was been a long time but you know <laughs> <laughs> 
Michael? Okay. <laughs> 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 well, and that's how Scotty made it sound too in the scene with Jason was that, you know, he really cared for Dr. Ulbricht. And that was the layer that Ken brought to it too. So it's good to see that you guys are on the same page. It's like, because it was about the grief about Franco, but yeah. also this development you had had you know, that we sadly saw mostly off screen, but it was believable, obviously. Really? And that's why fans are really into it. Yeah. Yeah. I've never, yeah. I'm such a great support. And again, because we're older and it's like, I'm sorry, people of yeah. all ages have love and intimacy and sex or whatever. But it's like, it's not just a pretty 20 year olds that have a relationship. Like anyone who's 20, if they're lucky, they'll get to be our age and they'll also want to have love and connection. Mm -hmm physical warmth and you know you don't have to be beautiful in this size and that thing and this perfection it's like everyone deserves love and to be loved you know so and to have give and receive so i think there's so much more i hope they explore it we'll see where it goes again you know it depends who needs work and who who has to be on camera and fill the fill those you know the, the days that they have to be filming and stuff so we'll just see how it goes and but i hope they explore that it's, it's a nice yeah. and i also love as an actor I actor and actor don't say <laughs> you have to be actor, actor. <laughs> a male person, an acting person you know I think it's 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 nice that that you don't just play you know especially on a soap you sometimes you're a one note Charlie and I, I I go crazy if that's all it was I would have left the show along you know said sorry I got to do something else but because I get to do different colors and otherwise I'll get bored you know that take me out then down, then sideways, and then, you know, and I get to show different colors, a whole other side of Oprah, that maybe there's warmth and a healthy relationship, because nothing's been healthy up till now, nothing, you yeah. know, even with Frank, <laughs> or, you know, or, or you know, his, well, there's son, but there's been all this guilt, and the daughter guilt, and complex, and anger, and it's like, nothing is normal, so not that this will be normal, but it might be healthier i don't know yeah. that's the right word but more real more more organic i guess and obeck does anything but organic so it's like um. yeah um sherry calvert in the chat um and i'm curious about this i'm trying to think back now she want to know if there's anybody she first of all she loves you she says hello so sherry says hello hi sherry okay hi. and secondly um is there anybody you haven't worked with that you'd like to work with? You worked with a broad section of people on the show over the years. Yeah, talking about an episode like last, you know, when it was ever was like there was Jackson, you know, the Jackson, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm like, oh my gosh! And then Maura was there, Laura, yeah. and, you know, Carly, and then Laura, Jeannie yeah. Francis, yeah. and then Dante, and then you know Scott. I mean, I'm like, who else is missing here? <laughs> right, no, right, because because Robert yeah. was there and, and yeah. Matt was there. Yeah. I mean, it was like everybody. I think I've pretty, pretty much, I mean, there's a bunch of new actors I have, I mean, new. Okay. You guys know like Brando and, oh, okay. and uh, I recently. Sasha, Willow, all the. Well, she worked with Sasha, yeah. Well, you worked yeah. with Sasha, yeah. 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 Yes, yeah, so we did the scenes in the bathroom with mm -hmm. the, what they were, but they were in the bathroom. I remember the location. I don't remember the scene, but. Um, <laughs> And uh, who was, and then Jack's that whole thing with him. And I yeah. said, well, I understand. She goes, he goes, I know you, you know, you're mad at me that I broke your niece's heart. And I'm like, no, no, I understand. Okay. You know, I was like, <laughs> really? You know, it's like, okay, I, I can go with this. So I don't, I'm trying to think of who's there. I don't know, but I, it's really cool because again, Obrecht has a different chemistry and different relationship with everyone. So that day I felt like Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hart. <laughs> 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 yeah, not that I was thinking. You've been around for so you, you've worked. You've kind of moved around and had at least a seat here and there with someone. So, and George Blackman says, "Thank you for saying everyone needs love, Kathleen." And I said, yes, really like that. Maybe yes, I mean it's true. That's what you know. My ex, lovely guy. Don't want to say anything bad, but you know, because I, <laughs> but he said to me, you know what your problem is? You know what your real big problem is? I'm like, oh, here we go. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, defensive, yeah. He goes, you know what your problem is? The most important thing to you is love. That's what's wrong with you. And I That's was- That's what's like, wrong? Yeah. Wow. Hmm. So I thought about it and I went, you're right. It is, you know, because we have careers. We were younger, we're in our twenties and thirties, yeah. stuff. So, yeah. yes, you know, career is important, and making a living and having your dreams and your family stuff. But at the end of the day, as far as I'm concerned, you know, when you're you're croaked and you're looking back, or you're about to croak and you look back in your life, what do you look at? Oh, I did ten movies and three of you know Hallmarks and four TV shows, and nobody gives a shit. Excuse my French. You know. But you have love, and someone's there holding your hand. And it doesn't have to be a, a you know, a relationship. It right. could be 
could be friends, it could be an animal, it could be whatever, but some semblance of, it could be a family member, some semblance of love, of giving, as somebody who allows you, and I think that's another thing you asked about Michael, he lets me love him, unlike some other people. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, but it's, you know, but you also, to give, be able to give love and also to receive it, and that's, mm. not everyone lets you in. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a big thing to, I, in my opinion, love is, you know, at the end of the day, especially at COVID, it's like, I've been, you know, FaceTiming with friends I haven't talked to in years. And like, what are you doing in my, you know, I'm like, oh, Facebook Messenger. And I've surprised people and they're like, why? Why are you calling me? I'm thinking, because remember we used to be friends and they go, they think I'm crazy, but you know, I've been busy and working and, and, and now this whole year being quiet, it's like, it really is about reaching out and caring and, it, you know, caring about older people who, that are totally isolated or widowed or, you know, it's like my heart goes out to those people because I'm blessed to have this relationship. But except for the ex was like, love is the most important thing to you. <laughs> I was like, yes. <laughs> I think, yeah. well, you know, I don't know how we got on this, but, you know, it to I'm me. It, sure. Yeah. So, folks, folks want to see you with Cyrus against Cyrus. Again, oh, that would be so. fun. They want to see you go up against him. I don't know how that would happen, but they want to see you go up against him. Well, maybe. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Interessante. Well, I mean, he's kind of now part of the storyline. They're pushing him in, folks, as you guys know. He's mm -hmm. kind of helping Peter. And there's something going on with Nicholas now. I mean, he's like, mm. now Cyrus, this is, this is a true umbrella story. Like, it's getting bigger. Mm -hmm. and bigger I know. And Everyone's bigger. involved. That's what I'm saying. Anyone could take Peter down. Frank, what we were talking about before, it's like anyone could take him down, you know, and it wouldn't be a surprise. Mm -hmm. It's like whoever takes him down first wins. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. Valentine. I mean, he's the one with the gun. Oh, how does about Valentine? He's what? Lucretia, what'd you say? I said he's the one with Lucretia. the gun in, in, on Friday's episode at Peter, but it's like, let's let, let Daddy take yeah. him down, okay? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen to his character because he's bad boy, bad, bad boy. Mm -hmm. But then again, every character has been bad, bad, bad. So, you know, and how is he going to be resurrected after he is taken down? So it'll be interesting. I don't know. One think? of my favorite, my favorite lines was between the past couple of weeks was between Maxi and Britta, where yeah. Maxi goes, yeah. "We've done a lot worse. I'm sure we can cope with something." Like it was just kind of like <laughs> yeah. acknowledging their past again. They're yeah. shaking, acknowledging their past, mm -hmm. um, and this whole thing. And we find out that see, and I think Frank was right because we were talking about this a few weeks ago. Homegirl's not pregnant. Brooklyn is not pregnant for real. Mm -hmm. Something's going down with those babies. Going, that was just a it was like it's, it's, it's just a, it's just a pregnancy thing. We're like, what? So she's not pregnant for real. Yeah. Why do they have to do this to Valentine? Hasn't he it's suffered Valentine. enough? I mean, shouldn't he just get with Anna? I mean, I, I'm sorry, I'm biased, but <laughs> that could be the next thing. He's going to yeah. be with with Anna. Is that they're going into that relationship? I like hope so. Like. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, but, but Frank, what you, so Frank, what do you think about that? I mean, it's this whole thing was this shit—the fake pregnancy, but Maxie's a baby to go away. Oh. Like, it, it, this was going to be an interesting story to justify <laughs> some of the people's actions. It, it, there's a lot of it's going to be a lot of justification that's going to have to happen for this one. Yeah. Oh, Frank! Yeah, Captain, I know this past week that we they did a big salute to Nancy Lee Gran and Alexis's character on mm -hmm. the show. Uh, what's it? What's been your experience working with uh, Nancy? Uh, I mean, I know you care too much. Her. We haven't worked together. I think one time we were in the Metro Court. She's sitting there with, maybe she was with Scott. I don't remember, or Valentine, but she was at the table. Oh, no, who she was involved with. I'm trying to think, was it Will? I think she was with Will. Yeah, Julian, oh, yeah. yeah. Julian. And and I think, and I was I was in there and we just, hello, hello. But as a person, I, I adore her. I, I mean, she's just, she's everything I'd like to be when I grow up. You know, political. <laughs> I'm, I'm more, you know, I shut up. I don't talk. I don't want to make waves. Everyone's entitled their opinion. And, you know, I'm just one person and I don't want to fight with anyone. So in my opinion, you can have yours, but we don't talk about it. It's just apolitical. But I look at her and I go, you rock. You know, she's fighting with every ounce, every cell of her body. I'm like, good girl. You know, I, I'm, you know, whether she's right or wrong, but she's out there and she's doing it. And I, and I always, when I was younger and I wanted to be an actress, one of the things that actor, acting person sorry so no, one, one of the things i always thought how great you have this political you have a, a soapbox or whatever you call a soapbox you have you know mm -hmm. you have a, yeah. a, a voice and people will listen if you use it in the correct way but honestly today what is the correct way i mean there are yeah. many ways and why would my way be the right way you know i'm in a store yesterday and 
and this this couple come in and they're not wearing masks and, and the guy goes you know who works there says I'm, I'm could you please put on your mask or um, let me know if you need some and they just stood there they didn't say anything and then he you know after a while because everyone's wearing masks social distancing and it's like i can't tell you how many people i know who have died and it's break them uh, fans that i adore mm. and they're close family members and and people i know and and i've known over the years and friends and family, it's like, oh my God. And people think it's a joke, you know? So again, I'm not getting, it's not political. This is right. life and death. This is not a political decision, but you know, so I'm sitting there and I want to go, of course, you know, punch these people out and put on your blank, blank mask, you know? And, and the guy in the store says, you know, the guy who works, he goes, I'm sorry, you know, do you need masks? And like, eh. so he takes them some masks and he holds their mask and, you know, they hold their masks and like, and they point, this is why we're about this close to leaving your company. And I don't want to name names, you know, this is some phone company. This is why, because of this. And I'm thinking, and they stormed out. Mm -hmm. I'm going, you fucking assholes. I'm sorry, excuse me. Right. No, I love it. No, yeah. right. You go kill somebody now because of a little piece of thing you have to put yeah. so you, you won't kill me or I won't kill you. I mean, just, it's mind boggling. But again, I'm not here to guide. And, and, and Michael's like, shut up. <laughs> shut up. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Right. Mm -hmm. I just like, just care because we know so many people, you know, it's like a, some lovely fans who might be watching and, you know, they had a Christmas get together, six of them and two of them died because somebody brought it home and two of them died. I mean, it's like, a, you don't think your, your, your sibling's going to pass and you're, you're, you know, who's like 50 and, and 60 and seven. I mean, it's like mind boggling and people that I've worked with in industry have died and crew. And it's like, it's, oh. it's unconscionable. It's unfathomable. All you have to do, wear a mask, keep a little distance. It's hard on everyone. I, each of us have struggled through, through this, mm -hmm. but I don't want to kill anyone. I mean, I could not live with myself if I knew that my actions, I didn't wear a mask and I took my, got the COVID and passed it on to my lovely 93 year old neighbor and killed him. I would never live, I couldn't live with myself. So, you know, it's just respect. And then people will say, well, I'm, I'm taking care of myself. You don't have to worry about me. I'm not worried about you because you obviously don't care. How about me? How about the person next to me? You know, so it's, but again, but Nancy, and I was an <laughs> actor, you could be out there and people would listen because they would respect you. But today you can't, even now I'm sure whatever I'm saying, I'm, there's probably a hundred fans going, you're an asshole. But right. I, I, all I do is I care about you guys. I care about the fans. I care about you guys. I care about people I love that I know in my circle. It's like, don't hurt, let's not hurt each other. Let's try to get through this crappy situation. So, but again, but now that I'm older and I see this, you know, like Nancy, bless her heart, she's out there, but people are trashing her. You shouldn't say this and you shouldn't say that. And you deserve to die. And it's like, why would people even say such a thing? You just, you know, life, th you know, threatening your life. And it's like, right. what kind of a world mm -hmm. do you live in? So I just want to do my lines, entertain you guys, make you laugh or mm -hmm. cry, whatever, and go love Michael. That's it. And then die one day. Yeah. <laughs> really, it's, you know, it's like life yeah. changes. As you get older, you just realize it's, you know, just keep it small, keep it simple, you know, just give some love, get some love, eat something yummy. Yeah. And, uh, After you and this, that's very, it's very beautiful, actually. And, and it leads, and everybody just loves you right now in the chat room. And, but what, what, what's interesting is it leads to that there are people ask any other projects, but one of the things you are doing is through fancyeventsinc.com on the 24th of this month, your third kitchen event. Talk yeah. about that in kitchen with Kathleen oh. Guy. About that. Kathleen in the kitchen. Yes, I I had a restaurant and a cookie business. I worked in, in Hungary uh, as an actress from 1992 to 98. I went there for two months and I got one job, another job, and I, I won a Hungarian Oscar, kind of the equivalent of a Golden Globe mm -hmm. supporting actress. And all of a sudden I got these beautiful job offers and I was only there for two months. It turned into six years. So anyway, long story short, and I come from bakers and musicians. My dad's a symphony conductor, but his father, my grandfather was a baker and had like 30 bakeries in Romania and Hungary. So it's in the blood feeding, it's in the blood. <laughs> cooking, baking, it's in the blood. <laughs> so anyway, I, you know, it's, it's like entertaining. You entertain, you act, you cook, you feed. So, so, um, uh, Coastal Entertainment, Linda Rowe and, and, and Dino, they, they said, Hey, you know, do you, you want to do a cooking show? And, 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 uh, cause they know about the stuff. And I was like, I'd love to. So we started this and it's been really fun. The kitchen. You know, it's usually about like 50 people or 70 people and we just kind of all talk. And I, I've got some, you know, first time I think it did like one of my recipes from my bakery, um, this lemon bread. And the second time I did like a Hungarian feast with three different things. This time it's going to be a Lebanese feast. Oh, and yay. Family, yeah. 
and there's like some mm -hmm. lamb dishes and mm -hmm. some salad stuff and then some great cookies and some fun things so and and we're doing so this one's going to be on april 24th if you want to get tickets go to fantasy events Inc. Inc. Mm. yes fantasy events Inc. Mm. Com. so and they have all the information and tickets stuff like that and it's it's a couple hours you can join in and i'm i'm sharing what i know i'm not a genius i'm not you know gordon ramsay but i'm I'm sure what I know and I what I had in my restaurant and in my bakery and then some other things that I've been cooking and I learned from Michael's mom and grandma and yeah. that kind of stuff. Oh. So it's just kind of fun stuff. But it's it to me it's really fun because it's kind of, I wish people were there, you know, we'd be in like this one room and mm -hmm. maybe it'll change to an actual, you know, seating area where people around they can hey, try this, try this. So I usually uh, Michael come on and I get a big spoon and he has to sample it. And he's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, but because no, that's great because it, it combines two things you love, talking mm -hmm. to people and being with the, with the fans, but also cooking and baking. I mean, like, I think it's a great, unique idea. Like, why not? I mean, it is fun. And actually, the next one we've got July 16th, and, that, and that's going to be Summer Salad Feast. This is always a feast. There was a Hungarian feast, mm -hmm. this time Lebanese feast. Next time it's Summer Salad Feast. It's got all kinds of great mm -hmm. stuff in my restaurant. And one of them was a, a story about me and Prince Andrew. But I'll, I'll <laughs> oh, wow. I'll on this July 16th to hear that one. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we were teenagers, but there's a story. But anyway, mm -hmm. but you know, so I, I have story and basic, and I'm writing a cookbook and it's called My Life in Recipes. And, and it's true. It's like each, you know, each food to me, I, I really connect, you know, each meal has a connection to my mom, my dad, something my dad made, my grandparents, who, you know, baking, um, love you know something that michael loves that i cook for him something that i ate with maybe at prince i mean just different different stories that happened in my life and these mm -hmm. so it's these recipes that actually pertain that has stories that actually pertain to you know stuff ever since i was a kid and that kind of stuff so i hope you guys join me on april 24th fantasy mm -hmm. events inc dot com for tickets mm -hmm. yeah, but no, there's some. No, there's something about food and and culture and memories and yes. I made I made, I made I made gumbo yesterday. My my, my father's side's Creole, and I put all mm -hmm. the crab and the sugar and it reminds awesome. my grandmother. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing awesome. at her feet and Lots. sausage. Well, yeah, of course, and Dilly sausage and Dilly sausage. Yes, mm. it's all in there. But it's but the whole process it takes a long time to make, folks. But That's when it's done, it's like it reminds me of my grandmother. It reminds me of growing up by her knee and and watching her make it and. And all the stuff telling you what to put in and how she how you know how you know this Kathleen how you say well how much you put in there well I just tested it. I did this much yeah mm -hmm. that now no. you never knew it like measurements yeah. but it's not the same when you're cooking now I've been doing this like this recipes I've been working on like last time over and I think I tried that thing last the Hungarian stuff like eight times before I put it down on paper because I'm like oh a little of this a little of that mm -hmm. same thing the Lebanese stuff it's like you know I I, I cook like that too because I you know everyone has a different taste you, you want it yes. salt a little sweeter. Mm -hmm. So everyone's very unique, but I'm like, no, a little of this and that. Now it's like, no, a quarter teaspoon of this. <laughs> have it, and, you know, and then I'll try it again. And I, poor Michael, I've been making these, you know, certain dessert things. I won't, mm -hmm. won't say what they are now because that's part of the story. And yeah. mm -hmm humor with them too but anyway so i i've made like i don't know eight times already he's like can you stop making these i'm getting fat stop <laughs> and like off we you know we'll give them to neighbors i i, I... <laughs> That's so, so funny. I, it's, it's almost i've almost got it nailed to what i like and i'm putting it down on paper and then and everyone gets you know everyone you come on the show and then everyone gets to watch. I mean, I do, you know, we talk a lot. There's a lot of interaction, a lot of talking questions, because that's the fun part is, is talking. Me sitting there going, put this in here, put that there, and boom, blow up the house. <laughs> it's more fun. It's interactive kind of stuff, which I really like. But um, so bring your questions, come to the show, you know, but everyone does get the recipes written, you know, written down, printed with pictures and instructions, ingredients, everything. So whatever they see, they don't have to make notes. They can just watch and have fun. Bring a glass of wine or coffee or tea or whatever it is you drink, club okay. soda or something and hang out. You know, it's, it's just a fun. Some people are like, well, you're making a meat dish and I'm vegetarian, but I'll come anyway because I like to hang out. And I've got some friends from my past and they, they you know, my, from my past, I mean, my childhood, my real you know not real friends but i mean people that i've known since kids so they are my genuine friends that know and they're on the show and they'll throw in some like yeah yeah you know when you were a kid it's like, Shh, don't say <laughs> so they'll be you know they'll yeah. be there a couple of friends from my childhood and they'll be there know me a long time so i put mm -hmm. so folks i put the uh leak in the in the uh chat so you guys give you want to write it down write it down and afterwards go Thanks. to it not right now we're talking but afterwards go to it
fantasyeventsinc.com. Mm -hmm. April 24th, and the next one is, I think, July 16th. Every couple of months we do one. So. I love it. And I want to also mention oh. um, Lucretia has <laughs> done something. Her and Susan Eisenberg have done something that's uh, incredible for our industry. Go ahead and take it away, girl. Yeah, guys. Um, I don't know if you're like me, but I was a big comic book fan. That's actually what else me and Frank would do together was comic book shows. And I always wanted there to be a soap con instead of like just a comic con. Like I've been to horror conventions. I've been going to these things since I was a kid. There was never anything specific for soap. So when I was talking to somebody else who'd been a, a comic con goer who was a soap fan, if you listen to my podcast, she was on there several times. We had a long hard road to get here guys like and and we just decided to do it ourselves so we're doing soapcon live so you can go to soapconlive.com and our inaugural event is may 1st all of our panels will always be free we have from gh since this is gh i'll just go into that we have scott evolved in himself ken schreiner because he was green arrow when susan was wonder woman on the justice league unlimited so so that's fun but yeah we also have Brad Mall, Dr. Choney Jones, Jackie Zeman, Bobby Spencer, and Shell Danielson, who was Dominique, uh, the mother to Scotty's only living child now, unfortunately, Serena. But yeah, they'll be doing a free GH panel. So that'll be May 1st at 7 p.m. Eastern. And you guys can check that out for free. But they also are offering meet and greets, video greetings, autographs with all the actors involved. We have a One Life to Live panel. We have an As the World Turns panel. But this is just the beginning. This is our inaugural event. I do hope that Kathleen joins us at some point. Um, but yeah, like it yeah, sky's well, the limit. Yeah. Yeah, no, congratulations. I mean, yeah. that's a right yeah, awesome. digest. Yeah, it's really great. I think we have to, you know, we've been in this business now for six, seven years doing this. All three of us have been doing it. And and we're trying to make waves. And we know a lot of people in the business like you, Kathleen, have been wonderful mm -hmm. to us. We're trying to make yeah. a difference. And this community, it's a big community, but it's also a small community. And, we, and we're mighty. We like, we like, we love ourselves. We love, it's a yeah. family, giant village. And I think we want to offer stuff to them. And I saw your website. I went to your website. I put it in chat, everybody. Which mm -hmm. I was like, it's yeah. great. The way they have things, the tiers, everything set up. It's a great system. I think it's it's nice. It's a way for like people like Kathleen to meet the fans and talk to them. Yeah. And say hello and hear the stuff that's going mm -hmm. on. And, fans. Yeah. I mean, meet this past year has been hard because, you know, we love to travel and meet fans mm -hmm. all over. Yeah. Hug you guys and, and, you know, kiss and hug and talk and take pictures together and be close, you know, and this has been really hard because that's why I'm grateful. Like even, you know, the, the kitchen, you know, the captain, mm -hmm. we talk and I can see people and it's like, how you been? I haven't seen you for a year, you know, but I know these people I've met them eight times, 10 times in LA and they follow me everywhere. You know, I meet them in LA, then in New York, then in Texas that, you know, it's like yeah. these people I know for years and years and years and all of a sudden we can't see them. So it's, it's, you know, through fantasy events, through, through, um, you know, coastal entertainment, we, we get to travel and meet these people and meet you guys. And it's, it's, it means a lot. I always tell people, it's like, you know what? We're in your living room every day, five days a week, but now it's a chance for you to climb into, you know, through the TV into my living room and I get to meet you. And it means a lot. It's just really cool. It makes this yeah. job, this is a hard job. This is not for lightweights. This is like, you know, you do prime time, you do 23, 26 episodes, you know, you spend two, three weeks doing one episode here. You're churning out two, three episodes a day. It's not, you know, it's like it's factory. Boom, boom, boom. So there's no like, oh, I'm an actor. I'm an actor. <laughs> there's no time. It's like, do it day and night to go home. So, you know, learn the next ones and come back. So it's it's so nice to make it personal and to make it three-dimensional. The whole, you know, the career and, the, and being on a soap makes it really real and alive and the connection with the fans and the, the social media makes it really helpful. We talk and we communicate and we hear your stories like, I really hate you. Yay. Okay, <laughs> you know, take yeah. Peter okay i'll do my best <laughs> whatever and that's what we wanted to do was connect with fans and it's yeah. great that we can do this virtually thankfully because people had laid out the template like fantasy events and like you know galaxy con and some of the you know people we that's use to sort of bring all this together and just make so specific you know events like this and we do want to do them virtually even after we can get out we we are planning on doing live events because the, the, nothing beats live i mean but it, but it is one of those things that, that this is a way to bring you guys because the idea was a little bit nostalgia. We're doing soaps from the past, like as the world turns and one life to live. So because people like like Alan Locker, who is involved and will be doing it on the locker room channel, 
is that we want you guys like to be a part of this and this is for you and this is about reconnecting just yep. like his channel did because he worked for as the world turns and guiding light as a publicist it's all about that we understand you miss i mean i know when it was like one life to live we're doing the kramer women guys like who doesn't miss cassie de paiva and and kristen alderson who was on gh you know it's it's so nice to see these people again and you know really bring the past back and also like with current stars too i mean this there was nothing like this for the soaps and i'm just glad that we could bring it to you but i have to tell you something lucretia one of about you guys doing this is so great because you know what we meet lots of fans but there are millions of fans that we'll we'll never meet because yeah. they won't they don't they can't travel they don't have the yeah. money they're not they're older they're not help they're not able to they just aren't you know for whatever reasons they they're they will never meet us in person. So for us, this is a great way to connect through social media. I mean, are you kidding? Mm. And for us too, it's like, I will never get to me. I, you know, I meet maybe 20, 40 people a year, or maybe a hundred a year, you know, or a couple hundred if, when we travel a few times a year, but otherwise, so now we're, we're meeting millions of people that I would never get to meet. And to, it's a big deal for both, you know, both sides of the fence for you guys and for us too. Because again, you're, you're offering something that it's very unique. It's awesome. And this one year, the COVID has been terrible, but tragic, but it's also been such a gift in many ways that new things have blossomed out of it. Yes. Sitting in the middle of, you know, I don't know where, yeah. Alabama, I don't know, somewhere that, you know, they're in a farm in the middle and they love the soap, but they will never get to New York or to Dallas to see, to yeah. a convention. And these are not cheap anyway, these, you know, traveling around. No. Awesome. So they get to meet us and see us and, you know, we can't hug, but we can certainly express emotion and, and you know, talk, talking, communication. It's a big deal. It's, yeah, it's really nice. Well, before we wrap everything up, because we can talk to you forever, um, Frank, <laughs> yeah. any, any, last, any last questions or anything for Miss Kathleen? Uh, what it, all right. What is your go-to cookie, Kathleen? Oh. If mm -hmm. you're baking. Oh, oh, wow. oh okay. Cookie? I just made some yesterday. It was a mistake, but it's, I'm going to do it again. <laughs> you know, I, I'm a cookie monster. I mean, that's, I had a whole cookie factory. We made 3,000 cookies a day, and then sometimes 15,000 we sold to the airlines when we, Maliv Airlines was still, Hungarian Airlines was still there. So, I mean, I'm, I'm a cookie monster. But I had like a really cool one. It was chocolate coconut oatmeal. That was just like, ooh. Ooh, that sounds ooh. good. My things that, I, that I thought was really good. But I, the one I made yesterday had was oatmeal, raisins, chocolate chips, oh, uh, infinite protein powder, mm. peanut butter. I just was just trying to concoct something. And then it was like, I should have written this down. And they're like, <laughs> yeah. I, I, will know. Send you, I will send you my address, girl. I'm like, oh, you send more to my house. Jeez. Cookie, soft, chewy, with lots of gooey stuff in there. That's my go-to. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Mm. <laughs> Those are my stuff I would avoid. I'm, I'm working next week. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the costumes. Like, oh well. <laughs> bring out the old. Bring out the bigger size. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got your new wardrobe. Can you stay the size for a while? I'll do my best. I can't promise. <laughs> that sounds good, though. Oh my goodness, Lucretia. Any last things for her too? Before we, before we um, everybody's like, everybody's like, yum. Uh, any last things, Lucretia, for her? <laughs> Yeah, I think we already touched on this, but since uh, Michael B is asking, what what do you see as the future for Dr. Albright? <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know. I mean, yeah. you know, this one thing I never know, because it's kind of fun. I, I think it depends who stays on the show, who leaves the show, who gets killed mm -hmm. on the show. Oh, yeah. Who loves the show. I mean, you know, again, I, I don't know. Just take it. I, I, I hoping, let me say what I hope. I hope there's more relationship with her daughter. I hope that, and oh, I know yeah. she's got some illness, but Obrecht doesn't know yet. But oh. I've seen, I'm like, what is that? So that's gonna be, that can hopefully pull us together that maybe the mother, you know, doctor, the mother, <laughs> this, <laughs> you know, Dr. Obrecht and I can help her with that. Um, I'm obviously hoping there'll be some, this nice warm relationship with Scott. Uh, my, yeah. little bit, my little schnitzel. Mm -hmm. so, you know, <laughs> so, you know, I, I hope I get to call him those endearing names. I remember, and I hope there's some warmth and progress. But uh, people are like, they don't like the warm, fuzzy, like you're talking mm -hmm. about the wall stuff. It's not going to cut it for Obrecht here. So they want mm -hmm. me to take people down. So I'm sure I'll be doing some dastardly things. But <laughs> it's so interesting. It's like, I just, 
I kind of got to the place where it's like each script to me, I always say it's like Christmas. Like, oh, what's in here? <laughs> what's on the menu? Oh, I get to kill him. Oh, I get to kidnap her. Oh, I get to stab this guy. You know, so <laughs> ooh, I get to be in bed. Oh, oh. And poor Frank <laughs> comes over. He goes, just want you to know. And he's embracing me for the worst. I'm like, <laughs> off my character well i've been waiting for nine years so yeah. I, I think i mean it's like so oh. you know you're gonna be you're, you're gonna be in bed with scott but no one's gonna see it <laughs> <laughs> well then i'm not gonna be in bed with scott and no one's gonna see it but you're into but i'm like great put me in bed yeah. with scott who cares i mean i want to represent a real person who's not perfect who's not mm -hmm. pretty who's funny maybe occasionally pretty but mostly goofy who's warm who's crazy who's cold who's conniving who you know who's sexual who's neurotic i mean i want that i represent my kind of you know my people so that i'm on camera with and i want women to see and go oh, okay i'm like her you know yeah mm -hmm. she's you know, slender and gorgeous, but I, I'm like her and I'm, she's not 20 and I'm like her. I could be in bed with a guy. And so I want to represent a real person. I put me in bed with him. But he was, I think he was just so sweet. He was like, don't worry. It's okay. You know, it's protecting him. Like, I want to be in bed with him. Like, okay, it's great. Because you don't mind? I'm happy about it. <laughs> Let me in bed with a guy. <laughs> Michael won't mind. He'll be, can I watch? You know, <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh my god kathleen thanks for always taking the call I'm yeah. oh you. guys thank you for having me it yeah. feels so good to connect you all and it makes it a lot you know makes it real so we're so isolated and you know the mm -hmm. career is like you work but you don't work and you don't see anyone it's like so thank you for having me i feel like i've, I've been with three really good friends having cocktails <laughs> double yeah. double yeah i know i need well, maybe. So, yeah. <laughs> Lucretia, maybe but yeah so if yeah, you want to see, I'll see you on April 24th in my kitchen on fantasyeventsinc.com for tickets. Mm -hmm. And then stay tuned and thank you for this. And congratulations on your show. And yes, I'm happy to come. If, if you know, if I'm free and, work, and not working and you guys want me, I'm there on your show. It's Lucretius and Frank. Right. I love you guys. Wow. Thank you. Kathleen. Be healthy. Be healthy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Kathleen. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Right. Oh my goodness! I just—that's so yeah. great! Oh my goodness, you guys. Um, so Frank Lucretia and I have been around each other for six, almost seven years now. And, and Frank and I had a friend anniversary right. the other day on on online. I, I, didn't, I didn't realize I friended you online six years ago. I'm still mm -hmm. waiting for Andy Goins' gift uh, to come. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Andy, but, get together. <laughs> But I just, you know, I, I do want to thank both of you guys. This show is my it is my biggest show on my network. It's kind of crazy. Um, and the Christian part of Forever a Day, which is my biggest yeah. audio drama on my network, you know. And and just both you guys, you guys, you guys are my, you guys are like my family, both of you guys. So I'm always excited to be around you guys. And thank you for making mm -hmm. my my dreams come true too. I'm, I'm trying to start this crazy little network and. And do my stuff. So thank you. Both. Well, yeah, just like Kathleen said, and I know you and I talked about this last week. I think it was, well, or two weeks ago. Well, the time is crazy with this pandemic. Yes. About yeah. how the how it's given us this chance to do stuff on our own. Because what else were you going to do? I mean, they're all sitting at home and realizing all this stuff you can do just sitting from your house. It, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. It is. It is. Frank. I mean, lots of flavored waters, guys. <laughs> <laughs> lots. Of I have gin flavored grapefruit juice. Mm, I really, I really yeah. crushed this pandemic time off, guys. Uh, <laughs> really, really you're, better. You're best. Yeah. Frank, you are the best, Frank. You are the best. I do. I, I love it. Uh, no, but but no, thank you. And you guys, and you guys out there, thanks for tuning in every week when we do this. And um, so next week we won't be here. I told you it's going crazy. Mm. We'll be back the following week, and I'm mm -hmm. having a guest for that show too. Um, and so just stay tuned for that. Make sure you follow Jason Me Spotlights everywhere. That's what we are. Um, uh, Frank, tell me they can find you if they so choose. Oh, you guys probably won't, but you know. Uh, well, before I say that, I mean I know I mentioned it with Kathleen, but and I know we're not going to have a really chance to talk about it. Uh, but the, the Nancy Lee Grant episode. I know very uh, good. Yeah. Very good. That was a really well done. yeah. I thought that was a really good solid well one-off episode. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I totally yeah. agree. Uh, find me on Twitter and Instagram at Happy Go Jackie. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Lyons, do your thing. 
Since I'm Lucretia Line, guys, you can always find me at L-A-C-R-E-T-I-A-L-Y-O-N anywhere on the internet since there is only one. And visit SupConLive.com and join us May 1st for the inaugural event. I love that it's yeah. starting in my birthday month. I love it. <laughs> yeah. For some reason, I just feel like it's back to me. No, uh, no we're very, I'm, very, I'm very happy for you guys. I'm yeah. so happy for you guys. And, uh, and for me, you can follow me where all James Lott Jr. sold at James Lott Jr. on all social media platforms. And people ask me why I always say that. It's, it's my little tribute to our friend, Lexis Torres. Um, mm-hmm. She uh, used to say it all the time in our shows, way back. You know Lexis Torres. You guys know yep. her. Um, and, uh, and so, uh, and years ago, she used to say it, and she retired it and let me say it. And I said, I'll take, I'll take the, the big, she was my first engineer ever that I worked with and made me feel comfortable on air and stuff. So that's why I always my tutor, Alexis Torres. She's at A Torres 890 if you want to follow her. Mm-hmm. Uh, her shenanigans back on in back east of Philadelphia. Um, next week I'm getting my I'm getting my shot. And so I don't know how I'm going to react to it. The last time I got the shot, I, I got extreme fatigue. I could keep my eyes open. So that's why there's no show next week because I have to see what happens to me. Oh I mean it'd be great. You could just be like napping right there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, here you go, Frank. I'll be like this. Like whole Laura. Time. Like I'm just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys talk like <laughs> an hour. Mm-hmm. exactly. I don't think that'll be for a good show, you guys. I don't think that'll be a good show. That's the only problem. So that's well, the, the writers of General Hospital thought it was good. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> but, but it may all regular, but back to normal. It may just say that right now, it's a little, uh, but I am I'm getting my second Moderna. I'm getting the Moderna, so it's a little rougher than the Pfizer. So I'm just gonna mm-hmm. see what happens. And- Sorry. Pfizer up in this. You, know, you got Pfizer, okay? Yes, I, mm-hmm. I got to make sure I'm see what happens. Fancy. So, uh, but but we will be back the following week. Frank may be here next week. I don't know, but we'll be back the following. Week. <laughs> I'll be I'll be sitting yeah. here, you know, I'm talking to my computer, drinking yeah. <laughs> kind of flavored water, whatever that may be. <laughs> oh my goodness! And you guys, be safe out there. Be careful and um, get the shot. That's all I gotta say to you guys. Yeah. See you guys next.